Our solar system might have some more planets up its sleeve. We know about eight official planets, but they're not the only ones that survived the chaotic formation of our solar system 4.5 billion years ago. Astronomers say there are three categories of planets in our solar system. We're in the first one, the four rocky inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, that peacefully orbit the Sun. They're located within the main asteroid belt that separates Mars from Jupiter, which is in category number two. That one's a group of planets in the outer solar system, the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets have huge amounts of ice and gas around what scientists believe to be their rocky cores. The third group lies beyond the area where our local planets are, somewhere further than Neptune. It's the realm where you'll find dwarf planets such as Pluto, Eris, and Sedna, and many smaller space bodies like comets. But new findings say there could be something else lurking in the dark besides dwarf planets and tiny space bodies. Maybe even a new planet! Models scientists made say that our solar system used to have one or more rocky planets the size of Mars or Earth. Over time, these rocky wanderers interacted with the wide gravity fields of our gas giants. This kicked them into a far-out orbit, away from the neighborhood. The question is if one of those Mars-sized planets survived and could really be somewhere out there. Scientists have made simulations to see what potentially happened. These showed that in half of such cases where planets interact with the gravity of gas giants, they get ejected into interstellar space. In the remaining half, there's this one rogue planet left in an orbit similar to the ones the Kuiper Belt objects are following. There's only one thing left to do now. Find it. Astronomers found the loneliest planet in the universe. They were trying to find distant brown dwarf stars, or failed stars, ones that never become massive enough to start shining. Stars are born with big masses, which means they also have strong self-gravity. The star squeezes in on itself. That causes high internal temperatures and enables the star to shine. But instead, they found a lonely wanderer, CFBD SIR 2149. The planet is between 50 and 120 million years old and has a surface temperature of 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Compared to stars, that's cold. At first, scientists thought it could be a brown dwarf star, but in that case, it would be way older. This starless planet floats around through space, passing only 130 light years away from our planet. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is 100,000 light years wide, so that's relatively close. The lonely traveler is actually a gas giant, four to seven times bigger than Jupiter. Maybe it was kicked out from its own solar system because of gravitational forces, or getting into another planet's orbit. Or it was formed away from its parent star. Far beyond Pluto, on the edge of our solar system, there's a space body about as big as Pluto, but a little bit colder and way denser. It's probably a big rocky body covered in a thin icy mantle. It's the dwarf planet Eris. Both Pluto and Eris occupy the Kuiper Belt, which is the distant ring of frigid space bodies that lies beyond Neptune. A day there lasts 25.9 hours, pretty similar to Earth. But Eris circles our Sun in the distance three times farther than Pluto, which means its year is pretty long, 557 Earth years. Eris has a bright, icy surface. It's one of the most reflective bodies in our solar system. It bounces back more than 95% of the light that strikes it. Somewhere out there, even farther, there's a super Saturn, J1407b, much larger than Jupiter or Saturn. It's an exoplanet, which means a planet that orbits a star other than our Sun. Super Saturn is 434 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Centaurus. It's the only exoplanet we know about with rings similar to Saturn. It actually has a huge ring system, 200 times bigger than Saturn's rings. There are more than 30 rings, each of them tens of millions of miles in diameter. There are gaps in the rings, which means there could be some interesting satellites, exomoons, around. If this super Saturn could swap places with our regular Saturn, its rings would absolutely dominate our sky. You could look up and easily see them. The view would be amazing because they would appear much bigger than a full moon. Scientists have found thousands of planets outside of our solar system. 
Some are dense as iron, while others are airy and light. And then there's the water world, GJ1214b, a steamy world, bigger than Earth and smaller than Uranus, 40 light years away from us in the constellation of Ophiuchus. It's a watery planet surrounded by a thick atmosphere, 2.7 times Earth's diameter and almost seven times heavier than our home planet. It was most likely formed somewhere farther from its star, where there was plenty of water ice, but later migrated to where it is today. Its surface temperature is 440 degrees Fahrenheit, which is too hot to host life like on Earth. It also has much less rock and much more water than our planet. Imagine a planet with no land, but only endless oceans covering all of its surface. High pressures and temperatures would form things like superfluid water or hot ice some pretty exotic materials that we can't see on our planet. Gliese 436b. It's a Neptune-sized exoplanet 30 light years away from our planet in the constellation of Leo. It makes one full orbit around its star in a little more than two days. This planet defies the laws of physics. It orbits its star, Gliese 436, which is smaller, cooler, and less luminous than our sun, at a distance 15 times closer than Mercury is to the sun. When we typically think of ice, we picture a frozen cube. But this planet has an icy surface, even though the temperature there is 980 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature is way above the melting point, but the ice remains solid and burning hot. This happens because of very strong gravity. It compresses the water vapor in the atmosphere into solid ice. The pressure here doesn't allow the ice to melt, no matter how hot the surface is. Now imagine being on a mysterious planet and it suddenly starts raining sapphires and rubies. One distant exoplanet, Hat P7b, a gas giant 1,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Cygnus and 16 times bigger, has specific weather and pretty violent storms. Rubies and sapphires are scattered across the planet when it's raining. On the planet's night side, there's a high amount of corundum in the atmosphere. And corundum is what mineral gems such as sapphires and rubies are made of. Clouds of corundum give such an amazing view. The planet is plagued by severe winds that often turn into powerful storms that push huge masses of those clouds across the planet. Although the planet is uninhabitable, it would certainly be cool to come there and pick up some gems. Still, the weather is pretty wild. Plus, the temperatures are over 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. By comparison, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, and its temperature is only 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Looking over the expanse of space, you can see a beautiful little blue dot in the endless darkness. It's an exoplanet, HD 189733b, that lies 63 light years from us in the constellation of Volpecula. But it's way hotter and larger than our planet, around the size of Jupiter, and it completes its orbit around its host star in only 2.2 Earth days. That orbit is so close that the planet is most likely tidally locked. That means it's always showing only one face to its star, like our moon always shows one side to Earth. The weather here is crazy. The winds blow at up to 5,400 miles per hour, which is seven times the speed of sound. The fastest wind on Earth only hit the mark of 230 miles per hour. And it gets better. The rain here is not made of water, but of molten glass. Clouds are made of silicate atoms and particles. They are the key element that gives the planet its cobalt blue color, not the reflection of oceans, which is the case with Earth. Earth used to be purple. Today, even when you look at our planet from space, you see a lot of green. The green we see in nature is there because of photosynthesis, the process where plants transform energy coming from the sun into energy they need to live and to produce oxygen for us. The main part of the process that gives plants the green color is the chlorophyll pigment. A long time ago, instead of chlorophyll, there was a molecule called retinol. Its pigments absorb yellow and green light and turn it into red and blue. So the earth was more purple. And then there's a pink planet, GJ504b, far away from us in the Virgo constellation, four times more massive than Jupiter. It's a newly formed exoplanet, around 160 million years old. By comparison, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. If we could go there, we would see an incredible world that glows from the heat of its formation. Everything around you would be colored magenta. Frozen planet.
plains. Icy mountains with their snow-capped tops glistening in the sun. Valleys, craters, eternal freezing winter. Wow. Hello there, Pluto. At first sight, it looks like a paradise for adventurers who love skiing, snowboarding, and all the other fun things you can do in snowy winter wonderlands. But the snow there is not like what you can find on the mountains of Earth. On Pluto, the mountain peaks are covered with frozen methane, while down here they're made of frozen water crystals. Because of its specific chemical composition, the snow on Pluto is red. The mountains themselves are very different too. They reach heights of up to almost 10,000 feet. But they're not rocky like ours, looking more like huge blocks of ice. Such a landscape cannot be found anywhere else in our solar system. But you'll need to pack some layers if you want to come visit. The average temperature there ranges from minus 375 to minus 400 degrees. When taking a look at it from a distance, you can see it has some kind of big, heart-shaped thing on its surface called the Tumbaugh Regio. That's actually a vast plain the size of Oklahoma, or Texas, that's covered in nitrogen ice. Scientists discovered this heart actually makes the winds of the planet blow. Craters are also big here, sometimes more than 160 miles in diameter, and some of them show signs of filling and erosion. Erosion is when land is worn away by natural forces such as wind, water, and ice. It's the same process that formed many interesting things that you can see on the surface of the Earth, like valleys, uh, coastlines, peaks, or mountains. The fact that some craters are there because of erosion tells us that tectonic forces must be slowly changing the surface of Pluto. One third of its surface is water, not the kind that we like to drink, more like a really hard frozen ice. Water is vital for the evolution of life, but not water that's this cold, so it's unlikely that any life has formed here at least for now. But how do we know all these things about Pluto? Well, here's the basics. Astronomers discovered Pluto in 1930, and just like with plenty other moons and planets, they named it after a figure from Roman mythology, the ruler of the underworld. Pluto was considered the ninth planet of our planetary system until 2006, after which it was recategorized as a dwarf planet. Despite its recent demotion, it is still the largest and the oldest known object in this region of the Kuiper Belt, an outer shell full of other dwarf planets and icy bodies. New Horizons. That was the name of the very first space probe that astronauts sent to have a look at Pluto in 2006. It reached a distance of up to 7,800 miles. While there, it took some important photographs and collected lots of important information, and discovered some of the uh, mysterious cosmic oddities found on the surface of Pluto. One interesting thing about this former planet is that it sometimes has an atmosphere, and sometimes not. It has an oval-shaped orbit, which means, unlike most other planets, it doesn't travel around the sun in almost perfect circles. As a matter of fact, the sun is nowhere near the center of its orbit. When its orbit takes Pluto closer to the sun, the extra heat warms up a kind of thin atmosphere made primarily from nitrogen, an element our Earth also has in its atmosphere. Right after it's created, it gradually escapes Pluto's weak gravity. When the dwarf planet moves away from the Sun, the atmosphere freezes and goes back to its solid state, falling back down to the surface of Pluto as nitrogen snowflakes. Pluto's interior is supposedly warmer than its surface. Some believe there's even an ocean deep underground. Despite being the largest known body in the Kuiper Belt, Pluto is still pretty small. It is smaller than the Earth's moon, around half the width of the United States. It has five spinning moons of itself. The biggest one, half the size of Pluto itself. Our days last 24 hours, while one day on Pluto lasts 153. Earth needs 365 days to orbit the Sun, while a year on Pluto lasts 248 Earth years. So, no birthdays there at all. It sits 3.6 billion miles from the Sun, which is 40 times the distance of the Earth stands. If you were standing there, on Pluto, watching the night sky, you'd see the Sun as just one small distant star, indistinguishable from the rest. Since Pluto has been demoted, Neptune is now the most distant planet of our solar system. It's also pretty fascinating. It's actually a huge ball of ice and gas. Yes, it's the densest gas giant in our solar system but you still couldn't stand or walk on its surface. You would simply sink in. But if you could stand, you'd notice that the gravity force is similar to what we have on Earth. 
Despite its impressive size though, Neptune is not visible to the naked eye from here. It's the windiest and coldest planet. And one year there lasts 165 Earth years. Still no birthdays. It takes more than four hours for the light coming from the sun to reach Neptune's surface. Our next gas giant is Uranus. One year on Uranus asked 84 Earth years, so you can maybe get one birthday in there, but you better make a count. Just like Neptune, Uranus can't be seen without the help of advanced technology. The rest of the six planets can, but you can still see all eight of them with binoculars or a smaller telescope. Now, pause the bit. See if you can make your astronomy teacher proud and try to remember which planet comes next in order from furthest to closest to the sun. You got it? That's right, it's Saturn. A plus. Saturn is the second biggest planet of our solar system right behind Jupiter. And another gas giant where you'd sink in if you tried to walk on it. It's so gassy, you could put it in a lake and it would float. They call it the jewel of the solar system because it has a big ring system that kind of looks like a crown. Its rings are made up of dust, pieces of ice, and rock. Some of those pieces are as tiny as a grain of sand, while others are bigger than tall buildings. Next on the list, and completing our gas giant quartet, is Jupiter. Scientists call it a failed star since it's mostly made up of helium and hydrogen, just like the main star in our solar system, the Sun. But Jupiter doesn't have a mass big enough to start the chemical processes that turn it into a star. However, it is still the fifth brightest object in the solar system, right behind Mars. You probably have seen it when stargazing sometime, you just had no idea what it was. Okay, picture all the other planets combined and double their mass. That's a lot of mass, but Jupiter still has more mass than that. It's also the fastest spinning planet, so it takes only 10 hours to complete a full rotation on its axis. Our day lasts 24 hours. Imagine how it would look like to squeeze sleep, work, family, friends, hobbies, movies, all that in just 10 hours. I guess I'd have to sleep once every other day if I live there. Now, picture this. Magnificent tall mountains, giant dust storms, volcanoes, deep valleys, craters. Mars. That red jewel scientists keep talking about being a potential new home for us. There were even some small meteorite pieces found on Earth that scientists realized were ejected from Mars. That's how close we are. If you love sunsets, you would definitely enjoy the ones here because they're incredibly blue, while the daytime sky is pinkish red. But when on Mars, you'd only see the sun at half its size compared to what we see on Earth. And of course, there's Earth itself. Seas, mountains, valleys, waterfalls, and of course, light. For 4.5 billion years, Earth has been home to so many different kinds of organisms that have lived, died, and lived again. And even though we know so much about our homeland, there's always something new to discover each and every day. The next planet, Venus, is the champion of superlatives. The hottest surface, the closest planet to the Earth, the biggest number of volcanoes, 1600. If you compare it to other planets to our solar system, the brightest planet with reflective clouds that make it so shiny you can see it from the surface of Earth. Oh yeah, and the slowest spinning body as well. It takes 243 Earth days for Venus to make just one single turn. You could literally walk faster than the planet's rotational speed. Venus also goes in the opposite direction of Earth. So sunsets there are set in the east, sunrises in the west. And last but not least, Mercury. It doesn't have any moons or rings, and it's the smallest planet in our solar system. A year there lasts only 88 days. So get ready to expand that birthday budget. Mercury is the planet the closest to the sun, but not the hottest. Venus took that title. Mercury is not the hottest because there's no atmosphere to trap the sun's heat there, but it does have wrinkles. Only one half of Mercury's surface faces the sun at any given time, meaning there's an incredible difference in the temperature on either side. And of course, these sides switch as the planet rotates. The iron core of this planet has cooled and contracted over millions of years due to the rapid change in heat, which is why wrinkles have appeared on its surface. Well, 
that's a brief tour of all the planets of our solar system. And one dwarf planet. Sorry, Pluto. Thanks for watching. It's normal for planets to be a bit tilted on the side. The Earth is tilted at a 23 degree angle. That's why we have seasons. It's summer when the part of the world where you are leans closer to the sun. It works the opposite way, too. It's winter when you lean away from it. But Uranus is tilted more than normal. It lies as a 98-degree angle, which has a huge effect on its seasons. Each season on Uranus takes 21 years to play out. Something to think about the next time we complain that winter lasts forever. Now, here on Earth, we measure distances in minutes and hours, maybe even days. It takes 10 minutes to walk to your best friend's house, or 15 minutes to drive to your favorite cafe. But in space, it's different. It's vast, which means we measure how long it takes to get to a certain point in years, or in most cases, light years. So, if you want to walk to the moon one day, that would take you 9 years to span the 239,000 miles. Perhaps you'd like to take a ride to the nearby star, Proxima Centauri. Maybe if you kept the pedal to the metal at a constant speed of 70 miles per hour, you'd get there in about 356 billion hours or around 40 and a half million years. Trust me, after the first 20 million years, you'd be second-guessing yourself as to why go there in the first place. Now, Mars contains the biggest valley, Valles Marineris, we've discovered so far. It's a pretty impressive system of canyons, 2,500 miles long. It's five times longer than the Grand Canyon. Researchers first spotted it back in the 1970s. A bank of volcanoes located on the other side of the canyon ridge probably helped form this valley. We haven't discovered a planet completely made of diamonds yet, but on some planets, it actually rains diamonds. On Jupiter and Saturn, gas giants of our solar system, lightning storms turn abundant methane into soot, which we also know as carbon. The soot falls and transforms into graphite. Further graphite transforms into diamonds with a diameter of about 0.4 inches. Now, before you start figuring out how to book a diamond-collecting field trip, know that these diamonds don't last. After they enter the planet's core, they melt. Ever notice how when you're stargazing two nights in a row in the same time, let's say 9 p.m., the stars stay in the same place, but the moon doesn't? Well, there are two reasons for that. First, it depends on what time you go stargazing. For instance, if you go outside at 8 p.m., and tomorrow you look for it at 11 p.m., you'll see the moon in two pretty different places. In this case, even the stars take different places in the sky since our planet is spinning. As you know, it takes 24 hours for it to make one full circle. That means, from our point of view, it seems like both the sky and everything up there is just moving around us one time per 24 hours. In the same way, the sun changes its position, rising and setting every day. So, if you went outside two nights in a row at the same hour, in most cases, you'll have to wait for an extra half hour or more until the moon gets back to the same position as the night before. The stars are pretty much standing still. It seems like they're moving, but that's because the Earth is spinning. But the moon is actually moving around our planet and goes through different phases. For example, a new moon is when it's completely dark in the sky. A full moon is when its day side is facing the Earth. It takes approximately a month for it to finish one circle around the Earth. Maybe you'd be luckier on a diamond-collecting expedition on this next planet, 40 million light-years away from Earth. Scientists used to call it a super-Earth. Now, a super-Earth is generally a planet way bigger than ours. This planet, for example, is double the Earth's size. It's so close to its star that it makes a full circle around it in less than 18 hours, which means a year there is pretty short. Since it's so close to its star, its temperature goes up a whopping 4,900 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of the heat, in combination with the planet's density, scientists have the theory that its core is made of carbon in the form of graphite and diamonds. Over 10 years ago, astronomers discovered a huge water vapor cloud. It was 12 billion light years from our home planet. That cloud is the biggest source of water we know of. It's also the oldest, dating back to when the universe was only 1.6 billion years old. Now it's 13.8 billion years old. Man, if only I had started a savings account 12 billion years ago. With compound interest, I'd have me quite a pile of cash by now. But I wasn't around then. Anyway, this cloud is so large it holds 140 trillion times the amount of water in all the oceans on our planet. This cloud kind of feeds a black hole. 
and may also contain enough gases, such as carbon monoxide, to encourage the black hole to grow six times bigger than it is at the moment. The average temperature of our planet is about 57 degrees Fahrenheit, and the highest temperature ever measured was 134 degrees. Sound too hot? Well, on Venus, it can go up to 900 degrees, which makes it the hottest planet in our solar system. It's not hot enough to melt steel, though. It would need to be higher by 2,500 degrees to get there. But it's hot enough to melt lead. And it's way too hot to sustain life, at least not in any form that we know. Venus is not even the closest to the Sun, it's Mercury. But it has a super thick atmosphere that traps greenhouse gases. It's like you covering yourself with a pretty thick blanket in the middle of the summer. Now, we're used to seeing volcanoes spewing hot molten lava. After all, that's what they mostly do on Earth. But in space, volcanoes tend to spew methane, water, or ammonia. And these materials freeze as they erupt and eventually transform into frozen vapor and something called volcanic snow. I'm talking about cryovolcanoes here. You can find them on Jupiter's moons Io and Europa, Saturn's moon Titan, and Pluto. These volcanoes are especially active on Io, which has hundreds of vents. NASA vehicles have even captured some of these erupting in real time. Plumes of frozen vapor coming out of them extended for about 250 miles. Hey, by the way, they just discovered another moon around Jupiter that might actually be good for farming someday. It's named (laughs) EIEIO. Now, what exactly happens to the light after it disappears inside of a black hole? Well, photon is a particle of light. The event horizon is the boundary of a black hole. When something, say a photon, crosses the line and enters those boundaries, it can't escape anymore. But it doesn't mean a black hole destroyed it. It pulls the photon in rapidly towards its center, where an enormous mass is packed into an infinitely small space. But we're not sure what happens to photons in such extreme conditions. It's still one of the biggest mysteries. Does a black hole destroy the light or not? Saturn has 82 moons we know about. 53 confirmed and 29 more that are still on the waiting list to be confirmed as actual moons before they get their official names. And one of the coolest moons might be a 914-mile-wide hunk of rock called Aepetus. It's dark on one side and bright on the other. Its lighter half is 20 times more reflective than the other one. As it turned out, the bright side is ice. The dark side is a bit more complicated. One theory says it's dark because of particles coming from another moon, the one named Phoebe. Another theory says it could be because of heat. Since the moon is rotating really slowly, its dark material is absorbing heat, which makes it even darker. Now, how big do you think a black hole can become? In theory, we can't find an upper limit to its mass. But astronomers believe the ultra-massive black holes, or UMBHs, located in the cores of certain galaxies are mostly up to 10 billion solar masses big. Recently, they even discovered these UMBHs physically can't grow much more than this because, in that case, they would start to disrupt the accretion disks that feed them. That way, they would kind of stuff the source of new material. Most people picture the universe as somewhere between aquamarine and pale turquoise. Even some researchers thought that was the case. They managed to determine the cosmic color by combining light from more than 200,000 galaxies within 2 billion light-years of our planet. But the real color is actually closer to beige. Researchers got it all wrong because there was a bug in the software. No, really? (laughs) It converted the cosmic spectrum into the color our eyes would see if we were exposed to it. The team defined this color as a cosmic latte. Ooh, make that a double-shot low-fat large-to-go, please.